do not lay up sensitive issues. Cloud seeding, earliest possible date on Thursday. You're watching the evening edition of News on 2. I'm Adrian Seat. Yang di Pertuan Agong Al-Sultan Abdullah Riyatuddin Al-Mustafa Billah Shah today reminded all Malaysians not to play up sensitive issues in the interests of any party. His Majesty said that every citizen has been promised rights and freedoms in accordance with the federal constitution, but that freedom must not go beyond the values that are fundamental to national unity. Percayalah perpaduan dan keamanan yang telah kita bina selama 62 tahun ini jika hilang akan sukar untuk dikembalikan dan nasihat beta buanglah yang keruh dan ambillah yang jernih mana-mana yang tercala rawatilah segera agar yang retak akan kembali bertaut begitu juga dalam agenda politik Mesti ada noktah dan batasan yang tidak harus kita langgar. Jika polemik politik dibiarkan berlarutan, lambat laun rakyat juga yang akan mendapat padahnya. His Majesty also lauded all efforts taken by the government in facing the increasingly challenging economic and geopolitical environment and welcomed various other measures to be taken by the government to strengthen the country's economy and finances while addressing the cost of living and eradicating poverty. Apart from that, the King noted that the development and practice of good and noble values in every aspect of life should also be the responsibility of the government and all Malaysians. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Tun Dr. Mahathir Mohamad congratulated Al Sultan Abdullah in conjunction with His Majesty's official birthday celebration today. Kerajaan akan sentiasa menghormati dan terus mempertahankan kedaulatan institusi raja berperlembagaan. Kedudukan Islam sebagai agama persekutuan serta keistimewaan orang Melayu dan anak negeri Sabah dan Sarawak serta kepentingan sah kaum-kaum lain seperti yang terkandung dalam perlembagaan persekutuan akan sentiasa dipertahan dan dipelihara. Sarawak Deputy Chief Minister Dato' Ama Douglas Unga Embas said the earliest possible date for cloud seeding to be done in Sarawak is this Thursday. He said the cloud seeding operations aimed at reducing the effects of the haze, particularly in Kuching and Sri Aman, will however depend on the weather. Elaborating further, Dato Ahmad Douglas said looking at the direction of the air and the forecast, Thursday would be the earliest time for cloud seeding. However, it will also depend on the clouds whether they cover the affected areas. The Deputy Chief Minister said this at the celebration held in conjunction with the official birthday of the Yang Dipertuan Agong at Serian today. Meanwhile, Dato Ahmad Douglas said Sarawak has appealed to the federal government to discuss with Indonesia ways to reduce the incidences of hotspots in Kalimantan. He added that in Kalimantan alone, more than 600 hotspots have been detected and Kuala Lumpur must consult with Jakarta on how to resolve the issue. All mosques across the country have been called upon to hold solat istika or prayers for rain to ease the haze, which has affected several parts of the country. Now, in making that call, the Director General of a Malaysian Islamic Development Department, or JAKIM, Dato Muhammad Nordin Ibrahim, said JAKIM had also sought the cooperation from the state Islamic religious authorities for the purpose. Now, in a release statement, he said three mosques under Jakim, namely Masjid Negara as well as Masjid Putra and Masjid Tuanku Mizan Zainal Abidin in Putrajaya, will be holding Solat Istika after Isha Press tonight. All Muslims are invited to join in. Now, according to Dato Muhammad Nordin, the call for the Solat Istika was recommended by the National Disaster Management Agency on Natma.
The National Registration Department, or JTN, today lodged a police report against several Facebook and Twitter account holders who claim that the department easily gave a citizenship to foreigners. Its Director General, Dato Juslin Juso, said the report, which was lodged at Putrajaya District Police Station, would allow investigations to be carried out as allegations made on the social media had caused the public to worry about the department's transparency and integrity. Pemilik-pemilik akaun Facebook ni begitu aktif menyebarkan berita-berita sebegini sedangkan kesahihan sebenarnya belum ada lagi pada mereka. Malah mereka bila dapat satu berita tu mereka terus sebarkan, sebarkan, sebarkan sehingga kan itu melahirkan kebimbangan sebenarnya pada masyarakat. Masyarakat dah mula takut kenapa apa dah jadi sekarang ni Malaysia. JPN ni dah mula keluarkan dokumen kepada warga asing. Sebenarnya itu tidak berlaku sama sekali. Dato Ruslin noted that JPN will be contacting the Communications and Multimedia Commission to identify the owners of the Facebook and Twitter accounts who actively spread the allegations as a step to stop the issue from being spread so as to confuse the public further. However, he refused to say whether there was a motive behind the spread of the messages by certain parties who wanted to use JPN. The Director General added that what was important to the Department was to endure decisions made in citizenship awards were based on the National Registration Act and the Federal Constitution. A Thai fisherman who fell off his fishing boat last night was found drowned near a fish pond at Pantai Ramis near Lumut today. The body of victim Satapon Fimla, 24, was found at 9 a.m. this morning, about 200 meters from where he was reported to have fallen. Now, Manjong District Police Chief ACP Mohammad Hanif Othman said investigations revealed that in the incident at 1 p.m. yesterday, the victim had accidentally fallen into the sea without anyone noticing. An inspection of a closed-circuit TV or CCTV footage at 1 a.m. this morning finally revealed that the victim had fallen into the water. According to Muhammad Hanif, rescuers and the Aceh Marine Police were only conducting surface searches due to the turbulent sea and high tide. He said the body was found at 9 a.m. and was later taken to Sri Manjong Hospital for post-mortem. Initial investigations found no criminal element in the incident and the case was classified as sudden death. A group of 37 mountaineers were stranded since late yesterday evening while scaling Gunung Tumang Bata near Gunung Liang in Mualim, Ipoh, Impera. Mualim District Police Chief Superintendent Wan Kamarul Azran Wan Yusuf said that as at 11 p.m. yesterday, a total of 18 climbers have been rescued by the Search and Rescue or SAR team, which began their operation at 6.15 p.m. Superintendent Wan Kamaru said the climbers who, who were trapped by a rushing river water were brought safely down to the foot of the mountain by 46 SAR team members from the police, a fire rescue department and the civil defense force. He said the rescue team had to wade through about four kilometers of rough terrain to rescue the climbers. He added that efforts to rescue those still stranded on the mountain are still ongoing. According to Superintendent Wan Kamarul, the climbers who comprise 25 men and 12 women were from Negeri Sembilan, Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. Sabah Police has confirmed that early investigations into the death of Army Major Muhammad Zahir Armaya, 36, who died in a shooting demonstration at Lokawi Camp in Sabah last Wednesday, revealed that the incident was accidental. State Police Commissioner Dato Omar Mama said that 11 individuals were called for inquiry to facilitate the investigations and a few more are expected to be called for further inquiries. Commenting further on the incident, Dr. Omar Mama expressed hope he would be able to present the outcome of the investigations to the Deputy Prosecutor earliest by next week. He also thanked all the Royal Malaysian Army for providing full cooperation throughout the investigation. Major Mohammad Zahir of the 11th Regiment Special Unit at the Sungai Udang Camp in Malacca died during a demonstration exercise in conjunction with the launch of the 5th Infantry Division and the 13th Infantry Brigade in Lokawi. The Kedah state government will launch a cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR awareness campaign to increase the public's knowledge and understanding of the procedure in terms of safety and health. Effective use of CPR procedures might help those in need, especially during emergency immediately. 
State Exco Tan Kok Yu said he will collaborate with government agencies and departments and non-governmental organizations to execute the campaign. The campaign is to be done in several residential and public areas. Untuk menjadikan dan juga untuk memastikan rakyat kita lebih memahami kepentingan kasihan dan kecemasan, kita akan lancarkan cakna CPR pada 14 hari bulan September. Okay? Jadi yang ini adalah satu program yang penting. Seperti saya kata, rakyat sendiri kena bersedia membantu sendiri. He was speaking after officiating the community Sehat Hidup Sejahtera Health Awareness Campaign in Taman Amba Alostau, where various activities were held, such as CPR demonstrations using automated external defibrillator, free eye examinations and lectures on vector infection. Malaysian fishermen have been urged to venture into aquaculture because of significant drop in captured fisheries resources, which has increased demand for marine products. Deputy Agriculture and Agro-Based Industry Minister Sim Zizin said captured fisheries resources were decreasing at an alarming rate. This, according to Sim, was why the government had put in place numerous conservation efforts and implemented certain policies to reduce overfishing. He said eventually, aquaculture seems to be the alternative of which at this point, only Pulau Pinang has reached 50% aquaculture and 50% captured fisheries with their temporary occupation licenses for aquaculture. We need to uh, encourage more state to take up and approve POL for aquaculture, uh, really do bigger on aquaculture. Uh, so this is where the Ministry of Agriculture is moving to push more people to go into aquaculture industry. He said this after launching the World Seafood Congress 2019 in Georgetown today. The three-day event, which has attracted the participation of 41 countries, was officiated by Chief Minister Chao Kun Yao. At present, Malaysia is one of the major producers of marine products, ranking 16th in the world in terms of fish caught from captured fisheries, 1.47 million metric tons, worth 10.8 billion ringgit, and the sixth in ASEAN. Malaysia also ranks 15th and 6th in aquaculture production in the world and ASEAN, respectively. Visit Malaysia Year 2020 is now being promoted globally by Tourism Malaysia. As for Japan, the massive campaign by its local media has contributed to the increase of Japanese arrivals to Malaysia. Deputy Director of Tourism Malaysia in Osaka, Sharul Nazri Shaharuddin, said the number of Japanese tourists recorded a 5.6% growth in the six months of this year and that figure is expected to increase next year. He said the arrival of Japanese tourists were the largest this year after a few years of decline, adding it was a good sign as a result of massive Visit Malaysia campaigns involving 200 local media agencies, especially the new media in promoting Malaysia. Sharul Nazri said Japanese tourists would travel between May to June during the country's long holiday periods and they favoured Malaysia for their travel destination. The Visit Malaysia 2020 logo and various special packages are now being marketed greatly throughout the country and Japan has always been one of the top contributing countries for tourist arrivals to Malaysia. Economic Affairs Minister Dato Sri Azmin Ali is leading the Malaysian delegation at the 8th Asian Ministerial Energy Roundtable and the 24th World Energy Congress in Abu Dhabi. Now, the delegation will exchange and share industry insights, new ideas and perspectives on emerging technologies and solutions to tackle the issues of energy, security, sustainability and affordability with delegates from 62 countries. Amongst the areas discussed were the participation of UAE companies in Malaysian public infrastructure projects. Dato Sri Azmin was also granted an audience with the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. This audience follows the special visit by the Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Riyatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah in June, which paved the way for better economic cooperation between the two nations. Dato Sri Azmin is also scheduled to hold bilateral meetings with Brunei Darussalam Energy, Manpower and Industry Minister Dato Sri Satya, Dr Awang Matsuni Mat Hussein, and Indian Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister and Steel Minister Darmendra Pradhan. On to sports. 
Harimau Malaya striker Mohamedou Sumari describes the presence of thousands of supporters at Bukit Jalil National Stadium tomorrow night as a boost for the squad's spirit to produce a positive impact in their match against the United Arab Emirates or UAE in the second leg of the 2022 World Cup Asia Cup 2023 qualifiers. The Gambia-born player said scoring at the match will be a meaningful birthday gift for him, who will be celebrating his 25th birthday on the 20th of September. They have quality players. We all know they all play in the big league and they're considered one of the best in Asia. And they've, been, they've had like quite a preparation. So no doubt, technically, speedy, like they're very good. But I mean, we're ready. I mean, we, we're not scared. We're going to go out there, play our football. And then we'll see, we'll see. Here's our home ground. We have the fans, the fans behind us, and then we have the crowd with us. So we try to, you know, give everything like last game, play, like fight all the way to the end, till the last whistle. He was met at the Harimau Malaya training session at Bukit Jalil National Stadium this morning. Meeting the UAE will be the biggest challenge for the Harimau Malaya in the Group G action. The match will be televised live on TV2 at 8.30 p.m. For the record, the last time Malaysia beat the UAE was in the 1982 Merdeka tournament with a 2-1 victory, besides another 2-0 win in the 1980 Asian Cup. Apart from that, the national team lost in nine other meetings and managed a draw. On to badminton, Go Vishum and Tan Wee Kyung staged a superb comeback by saving five match points to beat South Koreans Choi Sul Gyu, Seo Seung Ji, 21-19, 15-21, 23-21 to, to clinch the Taiwan Open title yesterday. Men's double pair Go Vi Shum Tan Wee Kyung battled through blood, sweat and tears to claim their first title in eight months. The world number 15 Malaysians were trailing for nearly the entire deciding game before finding themselves on the brink of defeat at 16-20. But Vi Shum and Wee Kyung fought back brilliantly to save the first four match points and level the contest. Although the world number 18 Koreans got back into the lead again at 21-20, the pumped up Vi Shum and Wee Kyung denied them for the fifth time before claiming the next two points to complete the remarkable turnaround. The victory was Vishum and Wee Kyung's second in the world's tour victory this season, having captured the Thailand Masters in January. Both shuttlers will be aiming to take their winning form to the China Open, which begins on the 17th of September and features some of the world's best pairs. Vishum and Wee Kyung will face a Dutch duo, Yelimas and Robin tabling in their opening match. And that item concludes this evening's edition of News on 2. In our top story, earliest possible date on cloud seeding this Thursday. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon for more news updates. I'm Adrian Seed. Thanks for watching.